David A. Wilson is a professor in the Celtic Studies Program and History Department at the University of Toronto and general editor of the Dictionary of Canadian Biography. As the Irish historian A.T.Q. Stewart once wrote, the phrase, contrary to expectations, rings through the story of the progress of human knowledge. It certainly came to mind when researching and writing Canadian spy story, Irish revolutionaries and the secret police, set in the 1860s, when the Fenians set out to break Britain's North American empire and the Canadian secret police set out to stop them. There were many surprises, among them the ones I'm giving you here, with a somewhat ambitious objective of listing six surprises in six minutes. First, the sheer extent of the Fenian presence within Canada. Fenianism is usually seen as an external threat, not surprisingly, since it was. And the Fenian movement within Canada is either ignored or minimized to a few hundred restless and obscure individuals. But that's not what John A. Macdonald thought. The Fenian organization has gone to a very large and dangerous extent in Canada, he wrote in May 1868, although I said as little about it as possible. My own research bears him out. If you define a Fenian as someone who supported revolutionary means to establish a separate independent Irish Republic, probably around a third of Irish born Catholics in Canada fit the bill. Second, the discovery that there was an American based Fenian secret service in Canada with its own agents and clandestine operations, linking up with Canadian Fenians, suborning Irish soldiers in British regiments, drawing up plans to burn down buildings, blow up bridges, cut down telegraph wires, and take hostages to aid and abet an invading Irish Republican army. Third, the activities of the Canadian secret police who operated in a high wire culture characterized by risk-taking, deception, betrayal, boredom, and alcoholism. At times, they even began to inform on one another. But their leader, Gilbert McMicken, was a cool, shrewd, and determined individual who proved to be an excellent spy master. Among other things, he set up a fake Fenian cell in the United States, run by Canadian secret police posing as Fenians. He also urged MacDonald to use sex workers to uncover the plans of the Fenian leaders, only to have his request turned down. Copulating for Canada was evidently a bridge too far. Fourth, Charles Clark. No one has ever heard of him, appropriately enough in a sense for an Irish speaking orange man who was for three years Canada's best secret detective. His story has the makings of a film or a novel with his hair's breadth escapes, his journey to the very top of the Fenian Brotherhood and his spectacular fall after a sex scandal involving a woman with the unlikely name of Miss Clapp. After that, and in the wake of reports emanating from Toronto about a plot to assassinate Queen Victoria, he was seconded to the British Secret Service Department. Four months later, he was back in Ireland, publicly accusing a prominent Protestant minister of raping his wife 14 years earlier, and consequently being fired from the Canadian secret police 
for possibly the only honest act in his life. Fifth, the fact that the Canadian secret police made a major contribution to British secret service operations two decades later, when Irish American Fenians began a bomb campaign in Britain. Drawing on their own experiences, the Canadians provided Britain with a series of recommendations about how to crack open Irish revolutionary cells in the United States. Advice that was duly followed and with some effect. Finally, and most importantly, Canada's approach to the relationship between state security and civil liberty. There's no doubt the civil liberties were violated in the attempt to protect Canada from invasions and from internal subversion. Habeas corpus was suspended three times and mail was opened, among other things. But Macdonald also put strict limits on what could be done, took steps to rein in zealous magistrates and did his best to prevent an anti-Irish Catholic backlash for reasons that were grounded in principle as well as in pragmatism, a middle way, if you like. Six surprises in six minutes and a postscript on the cover of the book. You'll see there a Fenian volunteer carrying the Fenian flag into Canada, trampling on the Union Jack in the process. Two years later, that same flag was carried again at a Fenian parade in Philadelphia, only this time by a government detective posing as a Fenian volunteer. <laughs>